so given the new bombing in Belgium, uh, here come the right-wing lunatics uh, on our side. And that is Donald Trump and Ted Cruz, among others. But let's focus on these guys because there's plenty of horrific things that they start, said uh, immediately today, starting with Donald Trump. You know, this is a subject that is very dear and near to my heart because I've been talking about it certainly much more than anybody else, and it's why I'm probably number one in the polls because of the fact that I say we have to have strong borders. We have to be very vigilant and careful who we allow into our country. Uh, I know Brussels well, and Brussels is a total mess. Brussels is a, and I'm not talking about the attack today, I'm talking about generally speaking, it is a city that used to be one of the finest, one of the most beautiful, and one of the safest cities in the world, and now it's a catastrophic, very dangerous city where the police have very little control. Well, as president, I would, I would do probably what I would have been doing for the period of time that I was president. I would be very, very tough on the borders, and I would be not allowing uh, certain people to come into this country without absolute perfect documentation. So let's detail the number of horrific things he said in there. Uh, number one, he blames the victims. Yeah, Brussels is a mess. It's Brussels' fault. Yeah, we really appreciate that on, on a day like today. I'm sure the people of Belgium will be thrilled to hear that. Uh, and then uh, he brags about his poll numbers in the middle of this. Has he no sense of decency? The answer to that is a resounding no, of course he doesn't have any decency. And then he keeps saying, he said it in that interview, he said it in many other places, uh, we're, we're going to have to keep uh, certain people out until we figure it out. Well, you've been running now for close to a year. When are you going to figure it out? It's not our job to figure it out. It's your job to figure it out. Why don't you figure it out now? So what, you're not going to do any homework? And, and when you become president, you're going to go look around and go, I don't know, how do we figure it out? That's your brilliant strategy? Wow. And before, we were going to ban Muslims. Now, it's not just people coming from Syria. I mean, these terrorists were in Belgium. They were before, they were in France. So are we going to start keeping people out from Belgium and France? Well, Ted Cruz has said some things today that indicates, yes, that might be the next step. Wow, what a great, smart strategy. Okay, more from Trump. What would you say would be appropriate in terms of what they can do to him at this moment to get any information they can about possible further attacks? Well, I would say they should be able to do whatever they have to do. They have to get the information, and I would say they should be able to do whatever they have be to do. Be specific, they won't if you do will. That because the laws are so liberal over there, they won't do that. But they should be able to do whatever they have to do to get him to give the information. When you say do whatever they have to do, can you be specific? I mean, what, are, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not looking for breaking news on your show, but frankly, uh, the waterboarding is, is up to me. Uh, and if we change the laws and or have the laws, uh, waterboarding would be fine. And if they want to do as long as it's with, because, you know, we work within laws. They don't work within laws. They have no laws. We work within laws. Uh, the waterboarding would be fine. And if they could expand the laws, I would do a lot more than waterboarding. You have to get the information from these people. And we have to be smart and we have to be tough. And we can't be soft and weak, which is what we are right There's now. Okay. So... More than waterboarding, he wants to change our laws so that we allow for more torture. The guy they're referring to is Salah Abdeslam. Islam. He was uh, the person who organized uh, the Paris bombings. They killed 130 people. He was caught a couple of days ago in Belgium. Uh, the bombings seem to be in response to that. And he's saying, well, let's just torture him because uh, that'll feel better. Right? Now, every intelligence official we have in America says that's not the most productive way to get intelligence. It just isn't. If it, if it worked better, we'd use it more, uh, but it doesn't work. And in fact, we waterboarded Khalid Sheikh Mohammed over 180 times. If it had worked, we wouldn't have needed to do it 180 times. So nonetheless, uh, Trump wants to feel better. He doesn't want to solve the problem. So he's like, yes, let's do torturing. Hey, that's what led me to being number one in the polls. Okay, now we go to uh, Cruz, and let's see if Ted Cruz uh, can out-monster Donald Trump. What we need and what we should be starting with is a president who acknowledges what this is. This was not a random act of violence. This was not disconnected. This was radical Islamic terrorism. We're at war. We are at war with ISIS, with radical Islamic terrorists who have declared jihad on Europe, declared jihad on America. 
They intend to carry out more and more and more of these terror attacks, whether Paris, whether San Bernardino, whether Brussels. And unfortunately, President Obama continues to embrace political correctness. He will not even name this enemy, much less do what is necessary to defeat it. And if I am president, we will defeat radical Islamic terrorism. We need a president who unleashes the full force and fury on ISIS and utterly destroys them. That's the only way to keep us safe. We've dropped 23,000 bombs on a, a arrangement of Middle Eastern countries, all majority Muslim. The great overwhelming majority of those have been dropped on ISIS in Syria. And we still have the bombings. Oh, if we just were more overwhelming. Carpet bombing, as Ted Cruz has suggested uh, before in this campaign. So you kill their civilians, who cares? It turns out we're killing a lot of their civilians. That hasn't helped either. Uh, but he knows if you just say the magic words, radical Islam, it'll all go away. What a child. Okay, more from Cruz. You know, the country is absolutely ready for a president who is willing to serve as commander in chief. Uh, you know, after every terror attack, we see President Obama go on television. And number one, because of absurd political correctness, he consistently refuses to say the words radical Islamic terrorism. So does Hillary Clinton. So does every member of this administration. But number two, he routinely lectures America on Islamophobia. This is idiocy. Yeah, no, we should uh, rage a war against 1.6 billion people in the, in the world. That would be smart. Okay, now look, Cruz, you keep saying it. Uh, here, I'll say it three times. I've said it uh, uh, 3,000 times at this point, I believe. Radical Islam, radical Islam, radical Islam. Did it get solved? Okay. No, oh, if you're president, he says on day one he would say the magic words radical Islam. God, how painfully stupid. If you think that's what's going to do, oh, if we just name it, that's one of those magic things. You just name it, it goes away. Oh, let's just do bombings. Oh, right, we already do. According to the U.S. Air Force, a record number of bombs have been dropped on ISIS. How's that working out? Okay. Uh, then Ted Cruz went on to say, quote, we will do what we can to help them, referring to Europe, fight this scourge and redouble our efforts to make sure it does not happen here. We need to immediately halt the flow of refugees from countries with significant al-Qaeda or ISIS presence. We need to empower law enforcement to patrol and secure Muslim neighborhoods before they become radicalized. So first of all, he's saying make sure they don't come over here. Well, apparently there's al-Qaeda and ISIS in Belgium and France, so now I don't know if they're on our list where they also have to get stickers or badges that we put on people. You know, we're going to profile the Muslims. We might have to profile the Europeans too, but then he says that's not enough. Right here in America, we have to patrol and secure Muslim neighborhoods in America. What kind of badge would you like to put on the Muslims you find, Ted Cruz? Maybe a yellow crescent, a red crescent, I don't know. Uh, I'm sure you'll have a good team working on that. Now, uh, of course, we're not the only ones outraged by that. Uh, there were many uh, that reacted. Tim Carney, apparently a supporter of Cruz, says, by default, I'm basically a Cruz guy now, and I agree with him uh, a lot in many policy areas, but the Gaffney pick, that's an advisor of, of Cruz who thinks the Muslim Brotherhood is about to take over the U.S. government, a full-blown lunatic who should be in a mental institution, and the, quote, patrols, not good, referring to how the Mus Muslims have to be patrolled, as Ted Cruz just said. Tim Mack writes in, what attributes would a Cruz administration use to determine if a neighborhood was sufficiently Muslim to, quote, patrol and secure? Maybe we should create ghettos for them and put them in the ghettos so we know where they are, right? I mean, we got to patrol them and make sure we're secure. We got to separate them out from us. Let's put something on them, make them wear it at all times, and then maybe put them in an area. You could call it a ghetto or something else, but we got to make sure that we separate out the problem. Our country has a problem and we need to deal with it. Paul Blumenthal asks, has Ted Cruz proposed special badges to easily identify potential radicals for his neighborhood patrols? Now, it, it's not just contained to these two horrific guys running uh, for president. And by the way, 
they're number one and number two uh, among the Republican presidential hopefuls. So the Republican voters have looked at these two monsters and said, yes, those are our guys. Overwhelmingly so. The other candidates weren't even close to these two. Now, our own reporter here at the Young Turks, Jordan Chardon, uh, has been going to a lot of these events and interviewing Trump and Cruz supporters. And you begin to get a sense of why these guys are as popular as they are when you see how ill-informed their voters are. So let's take a, a look at some of those. Terrorists blowing up buildings, uh, shooting up theaters is part of Islam? Yes, it is part of Islam. I mean, it, it, it's... Does it say to do that in the Quran? Well, I don't know if it's... I don't think it does. The Quran, it may not say to do it in the Quran, but it is clear that it is part of their religion. They're doing it because of their religion. Until somebody says, the problem here is Islam, Amen. then, then the, the issue's not going to be solved. Stupid drips down from the top all the way to the bottom. Like, if you just say the words Islam, well, then obviously it's going to get solved. Until you say it, it won't. Okay? <laughs> Their religion is really bad. Our religion is awesome. Um, well, you know, in the Bible, it says we should kill a lot of people, too. It also is wonderfully peaceful parts. Same thing in the Quran. Violent parts, peaceful parts. <laughs> oh, no, no. No. Uh, their, their religious text is crazy. Our religious text is heavenly. Okay, great. That's a crew supporter. Now let's go to another genius here. A fellow in Denmark was arrested by the police. He was wearing a pig hat. He refused to remove it when they told him he had to remove it because he was offending Muslims. He refused to remove his hat, so they arrested him. And that's when I decided to buy me a pig hat. Yeah, because if we all go around in pig hats, I bet this problem gets <laughs> solved lickety split. All right, m more uh, supporters. We can't let those people who've come from a war-wracked country, five years of civil war, we don't know what's in their heads. I mean, they've seen people shot down in the street and murdered and everything else. They're prime candidates to get here and become criminals. Mm -hmm. First two were Cruz supporters, the last one was a Trump supporter. I got one more for you. He ain't no damn American citizen, Obama. <laughs> That's, this is all friggin' politic games. He even admitted that he's all for Muslims and I wrote, uh, ISIS, so hello, wake up. When did he admit that he is with ISIS and for Muslims? When he went over to India, he went and did this practicing Muslim and read the Quran. It was right on U uh, YouTube. Right on YouTube. Yeah, when, remember when Obama went to India and declared he was with ISIS? They've gotten people to believe things that are literally unbelievable. Who could possibly believe that? Well, all of these people voting for Trump and Cruz. So when they see a tragedy like this, they jump on it. They brag about their poll numbers, they politicize it. And they get all their supporters all frothed up. Oh, we got to hate the Muslims. You just got to say Islam. And if you hate them hard enough, I bet that solves the problem. Let's go find them. And let's go make sure we patrol and secure them. Yeah, that doesn't sound like it might be a bad idea. How would that turn out the last time the world tries an idea like that? Here we go again. <laughs> 